This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be reviewing one of the loves of my life, the 255 bag, but with a twist. It is the 255 clutch bag. Hmm. Quite rare to find because mm, never really seen in this particular constellation and form on the Chanel website. So, before we get to it, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dacob all spelled together. Join me on Patreon to get again to get to get it. <laughs> to get access to extra perks there as well. And thumb up this video if you've liked it thus far. Also, thanks to my co-reviewers of this bag in the chat section because uh, this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. So, you guys, are you ready for the review of this? Yes, I keep it in a plastic bag because I'm always afraid that dust or what have, ha what have you might happen. And then inside of the plastic bag is the dust bag. I also have ask asked my sales associate to give me one of their timeless classic white pouches, you know, the white dust bags and microfiber, uh, and uh, she hath given me one. But I, because this is a black bag, I kind of like also keeping it in this pouch because this is one of those rare pouches that are felted on the inside. They're not just that cheap cotton that a lot of, well, the outside is this kind of rough cotton. The inside is a super soft, fleecy material. So this is one of those rare examples where I say yes to keeping the black, um, cover on top of this pouch. So that's rare that it happens that Chanel gives me this, these soft little pouches, but they did in this case, so great. But I will be probably moving this pouch into the white um, microfiber dust bag after all, just because this one is not long enough, as you can see, I mean, it, it does cover it completely, but it's not like you can seal it off and then just like completely shut this uh, hole closed. It always stays a little bit open because, you know, it would need to be at least this much longer so that you could kind of close the pouch completely to protect it completely from dust. So I'm thinking of, you know, maybe together with this black dust bag to place it into the microfiber white dust bag. Although that's kind of silly to, I think the microfiber white dust bag is even better than this fleece to protect the leather. But anyway, okay, we're talking about a relatively rare bag because it's no longer in production at the moment. But as we know with Chanel, things come and go. So this um, is a bag slash clutch and it is from the bag section of the Chanel website. What does this mean? This means that you might think, oh, this looks like a, something that could potentially be a small leather good. And as we know, small leather goods are in a different section of the Chanel website. They are placed in the SLG section. Like a wallet on chain is a small leather good. You could consider it a bag, but truth be told, it is not. It is a small leather good by Chanel standards because it's a wallet. This is by no means a wallet. This is a bag. It's a 255 bag. It's a 255 bag without a chain, without straps. It's a 255 bag without any grommets. It's a 255 bag without a back pocket. It's a 255 bag that is so reduced to the essential core of design that it cannot be stripped of anything more. It is so simple and yet so beautiful and so perfect in its own right. So why is it so perfect? Well, first of all, If you want to see uh, my review of the Chanel reissue 255 in the 226 size slash jumbo price range as the Timeless Classic would be, check it out on my channel. I'm going to put the link in the description box down below, but also in the card section up above. If you want to see my unboxing of the 226 size of the 255 and the review, also, if you want to see the unboxing uh, video and the review video, those are two separate videos of my 225 size, the classic size of the ratio 255, 
Also, card section up above, description box down below. I have also reviewed, you know, the 255 is my favorite bag. Also, the Mini 255, check out that review as well in both um, blue velvet and black leather. If you want to see the 255 camera bag unboxing and review, you can check that also out on my channel. I live for the 255. So having, I've wanted the pouch for a long time. It's just that I missed out when it first came out. Couldn't find it anywhere. And then all of a sudden it was gone from the website. Well, on the website, truth be told, they only showed the chevron version in lambskin, not an aged calfskin, because this is an aged calfskin. Now, as I said, for comparison reasons, if you check out my review of the reissue 255 and the 226 and 225 size, you're going to notice a slight difference in the leather. And you're going to say, oh, they used the better leather for uh, the 255 reissue. It's a different type of leather. They are both de-stressed calfskin. This one, however, has a slightly different glazing on top. Now, it's not the edges aren't glazed, it's just that the actual finish of this bag has a different patina than the 255 reissue. The 255 reissue almost feels to the touch as if it were a bit less treated, hence making it a bit more delicate because it is a more supple leather that doesn't have any sort of coating. This one has a little bit more of a coating, making it more robust, making it more flexible, more flexible, making it more robust and resistant to use. Why did they do that? Because it does not have a chain. If it had a chain, you would have just held the chain. That's what you touch all the time. You would touch your bag only to open the uh, the clasp or the, the flap and to close it. But since this one doesn't have a chain, you're actually, you end up touching it all the time. It's always in contact with your skin, which is what makes this one so special as opposed to all the other 255 with uh, chains or straps um, or handles. It makes it so different because this is the tactile one. Of all of them, this is the one that you end up touching the most. And that tactile aspect is what I have been missing so much uh, from the... Um, 255 reissue, because of that chain, because of the grommets, because you got to be careful how you place the chain if you put the bag down for a second. You don't want the chain to dent uh, the bag. You always got to separate the chain from the bag. You always have to be very careful how you separate them. You can't just hug your bag because the chain is going to get into the way. And if you kind of hold your bag like this and the chain by accident falls between your arm and the bag and you squish it like that, you're going to press the chain into the bag. Like... You got to be careful with that chain, right? So you end up not really toying too much with the bag per se. You end up kind of mostly holding the chain. And this is finally, finally the version of the 255 that you get to really touch. And that tactile experience is really hard to explain. But that tactile experience of having that sort of direct connection with the 255 bag is, for me... Uh, it's it's just divine to a, to a point where this is the pure pleasure of having a bag. It's like bag porn, literally. I know it sounds like really creepy, but <laughs> but it, it 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 is. It's the tactile experience that makes it so incredible. And you and because it's a tactile experience, it has a different coating. It needs to be more resistant to your you know to your sweat, to your essential oils, what have you. So it has this slightly different. You see, it's more. It reflects light differently, uh, you know, and there's a lot of lights here and they're set for human face to make the skin look better and healthier. And there's a different type of glow with the lights and filters used here. So it's not the best light to photograph a bag. So all the lights that are illuminating the bag make it reflect light more than it should. To the, to the eye, in reality, it's much more black than what you see on camera. On camera, it almost looks gray because it reflects light from every angle. But if I turn it towards my backlight, which is more red, you get more the red tone out of it. And here we got more the cooler white hues. If I go way into the front, almost trying to avoid the spotlights that are on the side, you get to see the bag in more of a light neutral context a little bit. So you get to see actually how much darker it gets. And yes, we do have a turn lock, functional turn lock, and then as we open it, I have tissue paper and desiccants inside to, you know, just keep its shape. Uh, as we open it, we notice that inside, I mean, inside, 
first of all, the top here, the inside of the flap, is also that same distressed calfskin that we're used to from the reissue 255. And it also has that coating to make it a little bit more resistant, but it's divine. It's still, it's the same smell of the, this is the same leather. They just gave it an extra, it's the same leather of the 255 reissue. They just gave it that extra layer and coating to protect it more, which uh, I'm living. And surprise, surprise, it's given the full bag treatment. It's lined in leather, not in fabric. Not in burgundy leather, it's black, but then again, for a relatively flat pouch like this, you don't need to have a lighter color to see what's inside. There's not much to see. It's, you know, and uh, it's completely lined in leather. Look at the aesthetics of this. Look how elegant and beautiful and sleek it is. It's a bag and bag concept. It is made in France, which, you know, I love my bags. It's like an extra cherry on top if it has a made in France stamp in there instead of made in Italy. There, I think it focused for a second, you could see. And it has another um, internal zip pocket here. So let me just take out the authenticity card, okay. And we do have this big zip pocket in there. And we got the other little pocket. And I had a little fly flying in here, a little fruit fly, irritating me. I got some lemons for tea. You know, fruit flies love their lemons. So this internal pocket is really big. I mean, there's a lot you could put in here. You could put a wallet in there. You could put, I mean, the zip pocket. You could put a, um, a phone in there and then zip it to make it extra protected. But the thing, the fun thing about this is this bag is more kind of protected from potential thievery because if you had a chain hanging from it, you would kind of hang it off your shoulder or crossbody and it would just be hanging back there and somebody could open it and just pull stuff out, right? But because it's a clutch, you have to hold it. There, nobody's going to open Who's going to open the bag? They can't. You're, you're literally clutching it. Or if, even, even more so if you're holding it like this. Nobody can access your bag. It's way more protected. Of course, you got to get used to the fact that you're holding a bag, not that you just kind of leave it somewhere and then forget that you left it and then you go because you're usually used to wearing always a chain on your shoulder and you think, oh, it's hanging off my shoulder and then you walk away and you're like, oh, no, I don't have a bag with a chain right now. I'm actually taking my clutch with me. So you got to be careful and just reset your mind to the fact that you're wearing, a, that you're having, a, that you're using a clutch, that you're not using a... Um, <laughs> A chained bag instead so that's something very important to consider but other than that if you're used to the fact that you're that you're carrying a clutch it's the safest way to go because you're literally keeping it closed so nobody can access it and, and open it the smell of this leather it's the 255 smell it's the exact same smell of the 255 reissue with the chain straps and the fact that they created a bag and bag concept also for this one, just like they did for the 255 reissue with the chain, is amazing. Like the amount of work that went into this, because they didn't need to really give you a leather interior. They could have, you know, opted out for the cheaper version, fabric inside, and you're good to go. No, they went for leather. And the lining is perfectly attached inside to the outer bag. So the inner bag, the inner leather bag, is, I'm touching it all across the, the border here. It's perfectly aligned with the outer bag. It's, it's the most beautiful bag and bag concept. So elegantly made. This is a 255 bag without chains. It's just, it's such a miracle. And for the fraction of the cost, I, I don't talk prices on my channel, but uh, this one is, you could make, do your math. Around one-third, bordering to one-fourth, one-third of the cost of, of the actual 255 reissue. So, for in Chanel terminology or for Chanel standards, this is a steal. It's still offensively expensive. But for Chanel standards, uh, it's in a totally more acceptable realm than the prices that right now the 255 reissues with the chain straps have. Um, 
I think Chanel outpriced themselves out of the ballpark with, with their latest price increases. So this is a great alternative, you know. Of course, if you're dreaming of your chain version uh, reissue, you're going to want to, you know, go for it. Uh, you're going to want to save up your money and get that one. But... And it fits more because this is relatively flat. It's not completely flat. It does have a stitch here. And look how beautifully stitched it. It's so well executed and aligned. So they have bent the leather here and then they stitch it together. And also on this side, the same on the interior of the bag. The same amount of work went to do to create the uh, come on. To create the interior of the bag with that one stitch to give it that angle. And the beautiful thing, how this stitch here as well as here aligns with the quilting on this on, on the back so the, from this corner we got this quilted line going down here and from this corner we got this quilted line going down this way right so these two lines hold on there okay can let me zoom in Okay, there you have it. That stitch aligns perfectly with this one. Ooh, that, you know, it's just so beautifully executed. They didn't need to really work so hard to align all of this, but they did. And there you have it, another one. And the only logo we have is hiding right here, okay? right there and when the turn lock is closed even that is hidden like this is so elegant you know because you know and nobody else got to know and then of course on the inside is your other logo which is you know the chanel made in france thing here and the little chanel logo on the zipper pull which you can't see right now because I can't with my fingers. There's the little Chanel double C on one side and it spells out... Hold on. And it spells out Chanel on the other side. Just got to find the right angle. There, right there. It spells out Chanel on one side and you got the double C on the other side. And that's those are the logos you get with this bag. It's It doesn't scream in your face. You put the authenticity card back in. I always keep the authenticity cards in their papers. Not because, oh, it came with the original paper wrapped around in paper and I'm just crazy. I just want to keep all the pieces. Yes, I am that crazy. But I keep them wrapped in paper because authenticity cards always on one corner, on one edge, on one side, because how they come, they come on these big boards and they got to clip them off. The part that's clipped off of the bigger board has like a little, like a little tooth poking out. And that is very, very abrasive. Uh, it's a pointy little piece of plastic that can scratch your bag if you keep it in your bag. So to have this paper around it, literally, I keep the paper around it to protect the bag from not getting scratched by its own authenticity card. Just saying. So that's why I always suggest to keep the paper wrapped around. And for those of you who have Chanel bags, you know what I mean. They always have on one side, on the on the shorter side, they have the little clip bit that, that was, you know, when they clip them off of the bigger boards, that little tooth stays there. And that that's very dangerous. It, it can it can um have the zipper pull. It can scratch your bag, that little uh, tooth on the card. Now, let me give you a couple of measurements. Uh, so I got a centimeter here, so we can do centimeters. Centimeter. So it's around about 28 and a half, 29. No, I want to say 29. Mm. 28, but goes up to 29 because it does open up on the so literally from this corner to this corner it's 28 centimeters but if you measure also these little bits protruding out we get to 29 centimeters in in width 29 centimeters that's quite substantial this is like the size of the 226 
reissue in, in width, right? Of course, the other one is much higher and thicker, but in length, sorry, not width, length, right? So here we get the width. Now, the furthest we can go, the widest we go, is three, three centimeters here. And then it tightens up a bit, but since we got the flap on top, you got to measure this entire bit, right? So together with the flap, of course, it's very squishable, so it can be tighter or wider. What do we got? Also three centimeters, but if we measure just without the flap, it's two. So it's two centimeters or three, and the bottom is also three centimeters. The height, we're going to measure it from that little loop up here, right from the little, not the loop, but from the, um, the arch, the archway. Let's measure it from the archway to the bottom, 17, 17 to 17 and a half centimeters. And I want to say, can we squish it like this? Yeah, technically you could. So if you fill up the pouch a little bit, you know, if you squish this, then here you gain more space. So let's say we're stuffing the bag with something big. I'm just, here's a Chanel pouch with uh, glasses in it, right? We want to put that in there. You see how the bag opens up now? It's more pouchy. Then you got to, oh, pouchy. This is pouchy. Fauci's cousin pouchy. And then you close it. And it fluffs up. See, it opens up now a little bit. So it's flexible that way, you know. We could, um, I don't know, we could even go more. Like here, iPad mini, my iPad mini, fingerprint magnet. <laughs> Let me put that in there as well. And the glasses. Now it gets even thicker, right? Now we're coming to a point where the bag is like, yeah, if you fold me, I can still get, I, you can still close me. But no, yeah, it loses its elegant shape. Let's just put it that way. Let me see. Can we still close? Yeah, we can. But now it's already getting deformed. You see, now we're like, well, not really. It's still super soft and, and squishy and pouchy, but you could see it's, the shape of the iPad in there. But since this leather is so supple and soft and it's padded, every layer is padded, it's still soft and it's so malleable that um, it doesn't matter how much you, you put into it, it will fold and adapt to its needs, to your needs, because the leather is just that good quality. It's just that good that it's just going to keep expanding and growing as you need it to. Of course, don't overstuff it. It loses its elegance. Right now, it's already a little bit too pouchy. <laughs> Let's make it a little bit more fauchy and a little bit less pouchy. But it works. You know, it still does its job perfectly. It, it you know, you're... We've, we've overstuffed it. But it, it still does what it has to do. So now we're going to open it again, and it's kind of hard to open it if it's overstuffed because of the, you know, this is very thick over there. So to get over it, you need an angle to kind of get this ring, well, not the ring, to get this rectangular ring over this, you still need an angle because there's a lot, there's like two or three centimeters here in height. So you kind of have to capture it. You know, you need that space. You need that momentum to get over it and then lock it into place. I don't think... Now, people, when I've um, done the unboxing of this one, somebody mentioned, oh, it's missing a, a back pocket. Now, I have a seasonal cruise, a Korean cruise collection from Chanel's 16 Korea cruise collection, Chevron, a single flap uh, without a back pocket. Now the back pockets, I like to have them, but I never really use them because I always am scared of stretching them out. And on a bag this clean and effortless and seamless, I don't want a back pocket. I want this to be clean leather. I don't want to have anything that I could kind of 
scratch cut into or you know because they have to kind of sew it on top uh, so for the 255 because notice one thing the difference between this flap and the flap of the 255 reissue big difference the big difference is that this one has been even more simplified because the 255 technically should have this part cut here and then down here it should have a little kind of semi-moon piece of leather with a hole in it and that's where this this little bit should be on a little hang tag you know a hang tag a little hanging piece of of um, leather here which they got to sew on so it's an extra additional step of work but they streamlined it they simplified it it doesn't have that little hanging little little uh, dinky <laughs> with a hole in it a dinky with a hole in it well that's a thing uh, again dinky with a hole in it perfection that is as genderless as it can get and in fact this is so genderless this is anybody can can wear this uh guys and uh girls so because they've simplified this and they've taken that little dinky bit off and they put the mademoiselle lock on the flap instead that streamlined simplicity also justifies the simplicity in the back of it without a pocket. Now, there is a Timeless Classic version. There's the clutch with a double C-lock. Now, that one does have the little um, dinky hanging at the bottom with the double C on it, and it does have a pocket in the back. Also to die for, by the way. But it's it's more complex. You know, it has more things to it. It does have the back pocket. It does have that extra work put into it to add that thing so you know when you're feeling a little bit more double c ish you go for that one and otherwise if you're feeling pure sophisticated less pop but pure sophistication a bit more that dry severe attitude of coco chanel's dna then you go for this one and if you're feeling more the bubble gummy more puffy 80s slash 90s Karl Lagerfeld vibe of Chanel, then you go for the double C uh, version of, of the pouch. I do think that they have the same length. I am looking into the other one as well, considering my options, okay, because that one is also really beautiful. However, this was the first option and it always will be the first choice for me. Um, just because I love the 255 so much, but also because it is the most elegant of all bags. Whether it be a pouch, whether it be a camera bag, whether it be uh, the the classic reissue with the double flap, in all its iterations, you know I'm a sucker for the 255. I just think this is the most elegant bag ever made in all its iterations. The beautiful thing about it is the paddedness of it all. This side is padded. This side is padded. This is There's a double padding here. <laughs> this side is padded. And the back is padded too. So in fact, just by adding my pr little protective, you know, when I just put, this is the, the Chanel tissue paper that I folded in this shape to, to match the, um, um, what should I call it, to match the size of the back. So just by putting this alone in here, okay, just to, you know, just to avoid this thing from kind of just bending too much in itself, just by adding this simple element, into this gorgeous bag this alone already gives it the shape that it you know should have when you store it you should always store it with the tissue paper inside so it always maintains its beautiful shape now once it's acquired its original shape just to squish it and to have it in your hands it's the feeling the touchability and because it doesn't have that back pocket you could squish it everywhere and it doesn't have you know that little step with the knits with the knitted, quilted knitted top on top, I'm fine with the pocket, but I'm also really fine that it doesn't have the pocket. <laughs> you know, if I want the pocket, I can go for the double C lock version of the pouch. But for the 255, oh, the simplicity of it. And then, because it's so squishable and so beautifully, gorgeously padded, it's like a pillow. I'm not saying you should sleep on it. You could. This could hurt you, although this could hurt you. But just to hold it while you're walking and I don't know. It's a it's a completely different feeling, completely different tactile feeling to be able to touch your bag and have it so close to you because it doesn't have chains hanging around. They don't 
mess with you. They don't fall into places where you're like, oh, wait, let me move the chain away all the time. This one is completely intimately yours. It stays close to the body. It warms your body. It warms your chest. You, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful to hold. It gives you also that bohemian vibe and feeling. Now, I'm not a big fan of Sex in the City, but you know that the girls in Sex in the City, by the way, it's coming back again in season, uh, they're filming, what are they filming? Season seven now. In you, as we speak, they're filming season seven. You know, the girls made the clutches really famous because they were carrying those clutches in the late 90s and early 2000s like there was no tomorrow. And you, the, the way that they that each person holds their own clutch, it's such an intimate and different body language and approach to how they hold their clutches. It, it's just so divine and luxurious to me. There is nothing more luxurious when it comes to bags than holding a clutch like this one. Not a minodier, I mean, you know, like a little... I mean, yeah, you know, like they're the plexiglass baglets that they have. I have the, the Chanel music tape plexi. That one you hold like a little jewel like this. That's different. I'm talking about a clutch that you really get to hold. You know how they were like lighting the cigarettes while they're holding the, the bag. There's just something so intimate about having it close to you. Nothing beats that feeling. Nothing beats. It's almost like you're wearing clothes. And this is what I wanted to get to. This bag... And, and its clutch form transcends the aspect of being a bag. This bag assumes a different character. It almost becomes like a vest, like an added piece. Like I'm wearing the sweater and like it's like this piece of leather is now knitted or um, stitched on top of the sweater and it's like a part of my outfit. It's not just a dangling accessory on a chain. It is part of this sweater now. It is officially now a part of this sweater. It's, it's clothing. Or you could call it an accessory, but it's not just a bag accessory. It could be costume jewelry accessory. You know, it could be a necklace. It could, I'm not, envision it. Of course, it doesn't have a chain. We're not hanging it off the neck. But it's like, a, it has a brooch like quality. It's here where you would put a brooch. You're holding it here. So that tactile experience and that type of wearability and physical approach to this bag, uh, you can only get with a clutch. You cannot get it with a bag on a chain, bag with a handle, only a clutch. And mind you, not just any clutch, because I have Vivian Westwood clutches. Vivian Westwood is famous for her elongated baguettes. They're called a baguette. Longer, thinner clutches, the shape of the baguette bread. You can't really hug those. They're not as squishable because they're usually thicker, more rounded, more elongated. So you have to hold it like this or, or just like this, and then they're like longer, they stick out. But Chanel... And this is what makes Chanel so magical. Always has that height, width, length. They, they expand everything to a point where they become... They humanize their bags. They become like these added... <laughs> I don't want to say prosthetics. That sounds so politically incorrect. But it's almost like you're adding a part on top of your body. <clears throat> and they feel much more physically organic, like organically attachable to you uh, than, let's say, a baguette uh, clutch, uh, the Vivian Westwood typical clutches. Um, they still are kind of stiff in their own structure. This one adapts to the body. You know, it stays so flexible. And because it's so organic, it's such a different experience from the overly structured uh, double flap, um, Chanel 255 reissue, which still has it, you know, it stays beautifully close to the body, and I love that one to bits. You know I do. I reviewed all of them on my channel, and I own all of them. But this one, this one delivers a type of comfort and connection to the bag that um, you don't get that intimate with the other bags. You just don't. They don't allow you to, because they're too complicated, you know, in all of the details that they got. So anyway, yes, uh, anytime, again, I would repurchase this, whether you're a dude or a chick. This one, this one knows, really, this one knows no gender. And it's just so voluptuous to, to have it around you. Anyway, let me get to your chats. 
Let me see what you guys write uh, about this. A really nice pouch, says Logan Laurent. Uh, I love pouches because I have big bags and I need pouches to organize my stuff. On the 19th of May, I'm going to get it. Oh, but don't put this in a bag. This is a bag in its own right. Don't stuff this inside a bigger bag. This is like a little something, something to go out. You could have another bag if you want on your shoulder, but this one has to be, this one is to be hugged. It's like, it's like for toys for grown-ups like this is you know you don't walk around with a teddy bear anymore you're too old for that right i mean you could if you wanted to but this is more like that also i gotta say like sometimes especially with the lockdown been home alone like you kind of forgot how to deal with society and you i mean i from for months i i get anxiety attacks more than i did in the past so having something to hold close to me like close to my heart my chest here it comforts me it comforts me. It's also like a protecting protection shield to have it really close to my chest. It's like something I'm hugging and it just makes me feel safer. So don't throw this into a bigger bag. This in itself, like it merits more because it really psychologically is also like a beautiful protection shield for me and the squishability of it all. I can't. Um, yeah. So Jack says, beautiful description. Thank you so much, Jack. MK says, speaking of Sex in the City, Miranda used to wear an amazing Chanel clutch in season three and four. I have never found it pre-loved. Have you, Jacob? I might have. Actually, I'm re-watching season three. I just started re-watching. I finished season one and two. I re-watch them every couple of years. And I'm now in season three again. And Miranda has not gotten the clutch yet. I've watched the first three episodes of season three. So let me get to that episode. I don't remember Miranda. I know that... Um, Charlotte at one point, you know, when they go to Chanel in, in, in Spring Street and uh, they buy, Charlotte buys a clutch. It's like a grayish one. That one I've never found. Maybe I have, but I never bought it. But you know, I got so f thus far, I have two clutches, but <laughs> I'm hooked. So who knows what's coming next? But you know, I do have the cruise, the Greek cruise collection, uh, yellow the sunshine yellow clutch also the love of my life that one is much longer and it oh it doubles up it becomes literally a square leather lambskin pillow to die for to die for much bigger than this one but they're they're both beautiful in their own way um jesus says it looks more leger when it's overstuffed this bag makes me horny says jack it makes me horny too <laughs> um uh, Lux says that clutch is perfection if only there was a Chanel store in my country oh no Lux MK says people know that it's Chanel Jacob I mostly carry 255 featured leather goods and people usually scream Chanel <laughs> as soon as they look at my stuff oh really uh, stealth bag says Kira Jack says it's a miracle bag it's just so amazing and as uh, you know and again for Chanel standards still uh, affordable this one you guys this one costs much less than the mini this one is like over a thousand dollars less than even the minis you know the minis they're like this small yeah i kind of regret not uh not owning it now but chanel clutches are my weaknesses uh, i mean my weakness too yeah so elegant says debbie uh <laughs> Jesus says, ha, I wanted to. Wish I had the coin, to be honest. You will have the coin. You will. It will come. It will come. I can't watch. I want that back so much. Everyone have a great week. Okay, Red Frag, have a great week, you too. Mm. Aperol Spritz says, I like bags uh, are, that are treated like food, sealed, no air. <laughs> really? Oh, no, I like to touch it. <laughs> oh, my God. No pun intended. Uh, MK says, Jacob, my heart is 100% with you during this segment. I'm holding all of my 255 goodies while watching your review now. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Louis says, I love me some Chanel. Very classy. Thank you, Louis. And uh, Franz Kafka says, love how you described it as being a part of your clothing. It really is, you guys. Yeah, Logan says, you're right. Yeah, don't just stuff it in your bag. You got to give it that, you know, give it that respect it deserves. MK says, so happy. I am more of a clutch dude. I didn't know you like them that much. We'll DM you a tableau vivant soon of my pouches collection. So, okay, yes, that I do want to see, the entire pouch collection. If I ever find a sequence where uh, Miranda wears the pochette, 
I will DM it to you. Okay, but I'm, I'm on season three now, so I'm probably going to get to it. But, you guys, budget permitting, I'm telling you, I have the entire spectrum of, of 255 bags, and I love them all to bits. But if you got to choose just one, and you want to have the iconic 255, you're going to get the, you know, you're going to get the, the, the two, um, the double flap reissue. But if you want just one that you are going to touch the most and feel the most and have the most tactile, organic experience with, it's this one. Hands down. Hands down. Because the lack of chains, it's... I love the 255 chain. Don't get me wrong. I love the intricate work that goes into creating it. But just to have one version of the 255 that I can adore and just love and be all touchy, lovey-lovey with, It's this one, hands down. And it's one third of the price of the reissue. So there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. I hope you've enjoyed it. Whoop, whoop. If you have, thumb up this video. Thumb up this video and let the YouTube algorithm know that we mean business here in the fashion bunker, especially when it comes to our knowledge and love and passion of Chanel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today and gain access to extra perks. Join me also on Patreon, Super Decable all spelled together. On Patreon, you also get access to extra perks, both members and patrons, such as, but not limited to, this wonderful uh, scrolling credits roll at the end of every video. Your name as a member and patron listed here at the end of every video as a co-producer of The Fashion Bunker. You also gain access to special other perks such as videos that never come to YouTube but stay exclusive only to Tier 2 members and patrons. You also get to see entire reruns of live streams that run every Saturday. So join my live streams every Saturday and be a part of the fun and co-review and co-experience all of these perfumes, bags and fashion stories together with me as they happen live. But the reruns of the entire live streams are only available to tier 2 members and patrons. You also get extra perks such as, but also non-limited to, reductions for the merch store, special price offers just for you guys that are not available for the general audience. While you're at it, join me also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Decab all spelled together, and follow me on my Chanel journeys. One of them, Instagram profile I curate dedicated to my Chanel collection, entitled Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together. You can also follow me on my other dedicated Chanel profile called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to the life of Coco Chanel herself. So guys, you know I love my Chanel, so I criticize it when criti critique is due, but I praise it when praise is due. You know, I'm not biased that way. However, when it comes to the 255, I have that weak, 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 weak spot for, for a bag that just makes my heart flutter every single time. Every single time. It's just, to me, it's my holy grail. It's literally my holy grail of a bag. There's nothing more. You could give, you could throw at me all the Birkins and Kellys you want. As Shania Twain would say, that don't impress me much. This, however, not only impresses me much, it knocks me off my feet. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.